Brakathayahawa, Brakathayahawa Shai, Brakathayahawa, Brakathayahawa Shai, Brakathayahawa, Brakathayahawa Shai. Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And blessed be the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and our Savior. The elders of Israel being the apostles, and the elders of great millstone that rule well. Shalom, which is peace and love to the left of Israel. Come back at you again with another lesson by Hora Chakoda Shalma from the Holy Spirit of Truth. And uh, the topic of this video or the title of this lesson is going to be something along the lines of fasting is a part of our culture. Fasting is a part of Israelite culture. Okay, and um, a clear sign is that when we go into the High Holy Days, one of those high, one of those High Holy Days is the Day of Atonement. Right, which is the day that we are into, that we are in the midst of, that we ought to be observing, and during the Day of Atonement, we ought to be fasting. That's one clear sign that fasting is a part of our culture. But we shouldn't wait to the Day of Atonement once out of a whole entire year to fast. It's something that we should be doing often. So let's start off with the Book of Leviticus, chapter twenty-three. In verse 27, also on the 10th day of the seventh month, which is today, all right, we're in the 10th day of the seventh month, all right, not going according to the Gregorian calendar, obviously, that calendar is off, okay, it says, also on the 10th day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement, it shall be in holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. What does it mean by afflict our souls? It means to fast. This is the book of uh, Psalms chapter 35 and verse 13. It says, but as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting and my prayer returned into my own bosom he humbled his soul with fasting so going back to that Vit leviticus where it says afflict our souls is talking about fasting right this is leviticus chapter 23 and verse 27 or uh, verse 28 now and ye shall do no work in that same day for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the lord yahweh by so we're we're atoning for our sins Okay, and we would do this yearly. Now, we understand that Yahweh Shai Mashiach is the ultimate atonement. The book of Hebrews goes into that. It goes into how the priest, uh, the high priest, you know, would go before the Lord and make a sacrifice yearly. He would do this yearly. He would make a sacrifice for himself, and then he would make a sacrifice for the rest of the people. Well, in the book of Hebrews, it says Yahweh Shai did this once. All right, he's the ultimate atonement for himself and for the nation of Israel, starting with the elect. All right, but we're rehearsing the righteous acts. Okay, so the day of atonement is pretty much like a Sabbath day, except there's no eating or there's no drinking. Okay, and you shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai, your power. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted, whatsoever soul that's not fasting, in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. So it's important. It's important that we don't intake anything. No food, no drinking. Right? It's 2, 2 15 right now. The sun goes down about 8 o'clock where I'm at. So you got about six more hours. That means we're 18 hours in. Right. That means we're 18 hours in, which right now the uh, that means that we're in the state of autophagy. All right. If you've been watching the Apostle Gabar, he's been mentioning this term a lot lately when he goes into um, his intermittent fasting videos and his health videos. Right. Which is great. You don't see, you know, I, I'm I'm not a big follower. I'm not watching every video. I don't have notifications on of the IUIC or the ISUPK or, or the ISUPK or even the Sakari. Right. But I do know for a fact that the spirit not dealing with them on the level that is dealing with the apostles and the men of Great Millstone on down. All right. You're not going to see General Yohanna 
talk about do a health video. He's the same nigga that told you to go get the, to roll up your sleeve and get that Jamba Juice. Okay, you're not gonna see Nathaniel with his millions of dollars do a video on um, intermittent fasting. All right. Now, if if I'm wrong, put it in the comment board and I'll correct myself and I'll stand corrected. All right. If you can find a video on them going into these different topics, hey, on on um on a cleanse, on a detox. Uh, uh, 20, 21 day detox, right? Showing you what's in the kitchen, right? Hey, you're not going to see that out of them, man. Okay. But this is a part of our heritage. This is a part of our culture. This is a part of who we are as Israelites. Again, it goes beyond just a beard and fringes. It goes beyond just not eating pork. It's way deeper than that. All right. And a lot of these other groups, don't show how deep it really is. Don't show what it truly means to be an Israelite, a son of God, a prince of the power. Okay? So let's move on. This is the book of Matthew chapter 9 and verse... Start at 12. But when Yahweh Shai heard that, he said unto them, They that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast off, but thy disciples fast not? And Yahweh Shai said unto them, can the children, so this is a sincere question, right? That John's disciples, right, came to Yahweh Shai and the majority of them became Yahweh Shai's disciples, right? Because John was set up to roll out the red carpet and pave the way for Yahweh Shai Mashiach, right? And Yahweh Shai said unto them, can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come. When the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they fast. And that's now. Right now, the bridegroom isn't physically with us. So what should we be doing? We should be fasting often. Right? And it's according to, you know, your spirit and your relationship with Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai. But it's definitely not something that you should just do once a year. When a day when we have to do it, just so you don't be cut off. I ain't trying to get cut off from among the people. So let me make sure I flick my soul, <laughs> you know? It's be something that we do on a regular basis. Now regular for you could be um monthly, every new moon, or after every new moon, just to start the month off right. Or every week, right? After the Sabbath or during the Sabbath. However, you know. Whatever's in your spirit. Okay? Or twice a month. How you know, however you want to do it. But it's something that we should be doing more than once a year. More than twice a year. Okay? It says, No man okay, that's the point on that. Let's go from there to the book of Joel. This is Joel chapter 2 and verse 12. It says, Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Okay? So being returned back to Yahweh Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, we have to be giving him all of our heart, all of our spirit, all of our mind. And with that comes fasting and weeping and mourning, right? And rend your heart and not your garments. It's, it's humbling ourselves. What did that psalm say? Humble my soul with fasting. It's afflicting ourselves. It's lowering ourselves. Right? And Tobit it says, prayer is good with fasting. Someone can post that. You know, I gave you the book. It's Baba Kushar. Just type it in. Prayer is good with fasting. Post it on the comment board. Okay? Um, when they were unable to cast out the 
It's Matthew chapter 17 and 21. How be it? This kind. Let me just read more on it. Matthew chapter 17 and verse 19. It says, Then came the disciples to Yahweh Shai apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? They're talking about a demon. The demon went. Let me start up. Uh, Matthew 17 and 16. It says, And I brought him to, the, to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Yahweh Shai answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I, bear, shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Yahweh Shai rebuked the devil, the demon that was on uh, the child, and he, the, the man's son, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Yahweh Shai. So that show you fasting, it, it, you know, as we continue to read, fasting will get demons off you, certain ailments, certain pains that we're dealing with. All right. And, you know, if we're dealing with some heavy demons and heavy pains, it's going to take more than one fast than one. It's going to take more than one 24 hour fast. It's going to be something that you have to do more often and more frequent. Right. It says, then came the disciples to Yahweh Shai apart and said, why could not we cast him out? And Yahweh Shai said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall be, ye shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So if we have faith, nothing's impossible, man. With, with, with men, this is impossible, but with Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, all things are possible. Verse 21, how be it this kind goeth not out, but by fasting in prayer. Okay, so that shows you the strength. That shows you the strength of fasting and praying. Prayer, period, is, is powerful. So how much more when you add a fast on top of that? James chapter 5 and verse 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. And that's what today we should be praying for each other, man. Okay. We should be praying that the Lord comes and heals us. All right. Rapa Nawa. Rapa means to heal. Nawa means us. Okay, Salak Nawa. Salak means to forgive. Again, Nawa means us. Forgive us. Kiyakokatayim for all of our sins. Natanganawa Rabim Chasadim. Give unto us much mercy. Babakusha, please beg. That's supplication, man. That's what prayer means to beg, to cry. Babakusha, Babakusha, Babakusha. Please, please, please. How wish I now save us? I thought now. My heart fast. All right. Quash la izar now. Okay. Quash means to make haste. All right. To help us. Okay. You got to get into that Hebrew as well, man. To strengthen our prayers. It says that, you know, the things uttered in the Hebrew doesn't have the same force. Or, or, or Salakia, the things translated out of the Hebrew doesn't have. Let me just look it up. Prologue of Saraka says, For the same things. It says, Wherefore, let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention and to pardon us, wherein we may seem to come short of some words which we have labored to interpret. For the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue. Have not the same force in them. Okay? It doesn't have the same force. So, speaking the Lashawan Kodash, the language of the heavens, it has more force in it. And not only these things, but the law itself and the prophets and the rest of the books have no small difference. That's why you have to get into the, to the original tongue when they are spoken in their own language. Sit on that. Go back to that, James. Um, James chapter 5 and 16, confess your faults one to another. Again, something we should be doing, confessing our faults to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai. All right, You're begging brothers, you know, if, if I offended you in any type of way, Baba Kushai, forgive me. All right, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. 
You go into that word of veil means to have much force, have much power, have much energy. Okay? So this is something that we got to tap into. Um, let's see what else I got. Joel, you read that. Luke 2 and 36. St. Luke chapter 2 and verse 36. And there was one, Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and lived within husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai with fasting and prayers night and day. So that's a part of us serving, being servants of the Lord. That's a part of the heritage of the servants of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Fasting and prayer. Okay, going back into that Joel. Return unto the Lord with fasting, with weeping and mourning. Who knows if he'll leave a blessing. It's Luke chapter 5 and verse 30. I pretty much already read this in, uh, yeah, I already read this in Matthews. Let's see what else I have. We'll read this in Judith. There's so many, so much more precepts, so much, um, other precepts going in on this topic, but for time's sake. You know, we're going to hit these precepts. And then I wanted to, you know, look at some physical benefits of fasting quickly. You know, this is Judith chapter 8. Judith chapter 8 and verse 6. And she fasted all the days of her widowhood. This is a woman. All right. She fasted all this. Now, this is very admirable. You know, this is, if, if that's the correct word, this is to be admired. Very honorable, right? And she fasted all the days of her widowhood. Make sure we're still recording. She fasted all the days of her widowhood, save the ease of the Sabbaths and the Sabbaths. And the eaves of the new moon and the new moons and the feast and the solemn days of the house of Israel. So she was she was always fasting except for on the Sabbaths and the day before the Sabbaths. And except for on the new moons and the day before the new moons and uh, any of the high holy days. Right. Obviously, except for the day of atonement. So that's how much fasting she was doing. OK, because she was what she was. She was a widow. OK, and, you know, she, mourning for her husband. And we're waiting for our husband. We're waiting for the bridegroom to return. He's not with us right now. So we ought to be fasting. I'm not going to say fast like this. That's tough. All right. But the intermittent fasting is great. All right. Um, weekly fast. All right. Every other week. You know, at least once once a month. You know, there's power in that. Spiritually, first and foremost, and even physically, there's so many benefits. Benefits of a 24-hour fast once a week. Now, I'm not going to go deep into it. I'm just read a little bit, jump around. Fasting can be a polarizing concept in the diet and nutrition world, especially when it comes to a prolonged diet, such as a 24-hour. Fat, 24 hour fast once a week. Some dietitians and healthcare providers say that fasting is detrimental to your health and does not promote weight loss in a sustainable way. It's all bullshit because they're not trained to teach you nutrition. They're not, they're, they're not dietitians. You go to the doctor and say, look, this is the problem. I'm dealing with this, that, and the third. They don't say, what's your diet like? What's your exercise like? They just throw pills at you. All right. What can a, what can you no um, 
13 benefits of a 24-hour fast once a week can include the following. A weekly 24-hour fast can promote weight loss. If that's your goal, that'll help. It'll boost your, uh, it'll boost your metabolism. Okay? Again, I'm not going to go too far into these details. Number two, a weekly 24-hour fast may reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. So it's good for your cardiovascular system. A weekly, a weekly 24-hour fast may reduce the risk of metabolic syndrome. All right, I'll read that. It says, studies suggest that a 24-hour fast once a week may reduce the risk of metabolic syndrome because 24-hour fast reduce LDL, which is bad cholesterol and triglycerides, increase HDL, which is good cholesterol, and reduce body fat. All right, who wants body fat, right? A weekly 24-hour fast may help fight certain cancers, and there's cancers everywhere. Although human studies are lacking, evidence from animal studies suggest that fasting may help the body fight certain cancers by making tumor cells more sensitive to chemotherapy agents. This makes it easier to kill off the tumors, especially in cases of aggressive tumor growth. So when you're fasting, that creates, um, again, I mentioned that word autophagy. Auto means self and phagy means to eat. To eat, to eat oneself, all right? So right now we're in the state of autophagy. I believe it's after 18 hours. It could be 16 hours, okay? But we're in the state of autophagy right now. So right now my body is eating its dead cells, dead cells, dead, useless, dying cells. It's being eating up right now. That's what my body is eating since I haven't eaten in the past 18 hours, all right? It's getting rid of waste, and simultaneously, it's creating more stem cells. Stem cells are pretty much like super cells, okay? They can do the job of many other different cells, such as brain cells, muscle cells, all right? White blood cells, red blood cells, all right? This is what's happening when you fast, okay? A weekly 24-hour fast may help reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke. Evidence suggests that intermittent fasting has a similar positive effect on cardiovascular and brain health as aerobic exercise by increasing brain-derived neuro, uh, neurotrophic factors. That is to reduce oxidative damage and increase cellular stress resistance, which in turn increases the resistance of heart and brain cells to ischemic injury, reducing the risk of heart attack and stroke. I definitely don't want no heart attack or no stroke. A weekly 24-hour fast may increase growth hormone, HGH, right? Which is a human growth hormone, increases muscle building and cellular repair, and accelerates fat burning. A weekly 24-hour fast may stimulate autophagy. Let's go into it. Extended fasting, such as 24 hours without slack, such as going 24 hours without eating, induces autophagy, which is a cellular which is a cellular cleanup process whereby the healthy cells get rid of cellular waste, uh, cellular waste products in dead and dying cells. The process of autophagy improves cellular health, reduces inflammation, supports new cellular growth, and is said to stave off aging. A weekly 24-hour fast can reduce oxidative stress. One of the main benefits of 24-hour fast once a week is that it may help defend your body from oxidative stress, which is damage that occurs from free radicals and reactive species. Oxidative stress is associated with the premature breakdown of proteins and cellular membranes, alter, alterations of DNA and cellular aging. It says, therefore, by helping the body fend off oxidative stress, 24-hour water fast, which we're doing a straight, full-blown fast. Now... You get more into fasting, you can do it how you will. I, I personally go for the dry fast. The dry fast. It's more, it's more um, spiritual to me. You know, you not take, you not, you like an angel. Angels don't need to eat. Angels don't need to drink. Right. So the water fast is cool. 
Okay, three days. They say studies show that after three days of a water fast, your immune system begins to reset. All right, it's getting rid of all the bullshit and and, and rebuilding. It starts to rebuild. Okay, and you can look deeper into that. Twenty-four hour water fast can help protect against cellular damage and can protectly potentially so I can combat aging. A weekly 24-hour fast can reduce inflammation, can help improve brain health. Let's go into that brain health. It says the benefits of fasting for 24 hours are not solely confined to the body. There are benefits of a 24-hour fast once a week for the brain as well. For example, animal studies suggest that periodic fasting, periodic, right, which means you're doing it often, fasting may stimulate neurogenesis the growth of new neurons and may increase longevity like right now i mean i I wouldn't be able to pronounce that word if i wasn't fasting (laughs) sound like a commercial right neurogenesis i just learned that word just because i fasted right this is a weekly 24-hour fast may improve insulin sensitivity a weekly 24-hour fast may increase your metabolic rate studies suggest that although Prolonged fasting can decrease your metabolic rate. Short-term caloric restriction with periodic fast can increase metabolic rate. Number 13, last but not least, says a weekly 24-hour fast can reduce the risk of certain diseases. Due to benefits such as reducing insulin and increasing autophagy, a 24-hour fast once a week may help reduce the risk of various diseases such as diabetes certain cancers and neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's disease. Although doing a 24-hour fast once a week isn't necessarily safe or tenable for everyone, it can be a wonderful way to boost health and support weight loss goals for others. If you're interested, right, so that's it on that, man. All right, so that's pretty much it for the lesson. I don't want my desire was edifying, uplifting, and exhorting. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachadash. Yahweh is the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, powerful, mighty name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior. Rachachadash is the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, that allows us to rightly divide the word of truth and teach the word correctly and directly. To the elders of Israel, being the apostles and the elders. It will well. Shalom wa ala bachar shashrala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Shalom wa machem, and brothers keep on pushing, stay sober, stay diligent, stay faithful, stay prayed up. Salvation draweth nigh and redemption is nearer than we believe. Shalom.